1988 and founder of IMSA. So we'll begin with a moment of silence. Thank you. So I never had the opportunity to meet uh, Dr. Letterman. I'm probably the first uh, president of IMSA that never had that opportunity for, because the previous presidents had that opportunity. And by the time I arrived, Dr. Letterman uh, was on in years and had uh, some difficulties. But I have heard stories, and you've heard me quote him often. And in fact, in your, in your um, item that you received today, uh, I often quote the statement of possibilities. If we do what we know and feel is right, it is bound to happen. And so uh, I'll leave that for you to read and for you to review. Uh, there was a New York Times article recently and his passing, and there's been lots of articles about him. But early in his career, Dr. Letterman and two colleagues demonstrated that there are at least two kinds of particles uh, called neutrinos. Uh, they're now known to be three, and that was why he received the Nobel Prize in physics. In his Nobel banquet, Dr. Letterman said that the two neutrinos sounded like an Italian dance team. And that was some of the stories that I had heard about him. His sense of humor is something that people really talked about. And so um, he was also very focused on education and thus he was uh, the founder of IMSA. He was also very involved in education through Fermilab. Uh, Letterman was also known for uh, his attempt to change the sequence of science, um, the order of how science is taught. He called it physics first. And he said, we're teaching high school science in the wrong order, biology, chemistry, and then for 20% of the students, eventually physics. Uh, he said it, was much, it would be much better, he said, uh, if we began with physics, including a basic understanding of atoms that would lay the groundwork for chemistry in which atoms join to form molecules, and then biology, where the interaction of molecules gives rise to life. Maybe the next could come psychology. Dr. Lehrman said this, he said, atoms form molecules, and the molecules form things that crawled out of the ocean, and here we are worrying about the whole thing. So these, again, are the kinds of things he would say. And, he, and when asked about why this sense of humor, he said that, um, uh, he, he, the sense of humor came from a terror of taking himself, or he said, taking myself seriously. And I think that's something that we end up doing too, too much, that we take ourselves too seriously, and we think that we're the only, sort of we're the center of the, of the universe, certainly the center of our universe. He says that the, uh, the Times article actually closed by saying this. He says, there's always a place at the edge of our knowledge where what's beyond it is unmanageable, and that edge, of course, moves. In the beginning were the laws of physics, but where did the laws come from? At that point, he said, you're stuck. I actually say, he said, go across the street to the theology school and ask those guys because I don't know. Let me close with this. Over the past few weeks, we've, there's been lots of um, statements about his life, his achievements, and um, we actually received uh, an email that Julia Hewson um, uh, translated for us, and I wanted to share that with you. Um, this is from um, Dr. Mikhail uh, Ivanov, the principal of PTHS school in St. Petersburg, and his wife, wife Tatiana. And, they, and uh, they said, dear Julia and Pavel, dear colleagues, we mourn with you the passing of Leon Letterman. And the weather in our city these days cries with us as well by raining every night. Mikhail Ivanov and Tatiana Ivanov. P.S. Dr. Zors Alferov sends his condolences. Dr. Alferov is also a Nobel laureate in physics who helped establish PTHS in 1987. So that is sort of the, the, um, the ecosystem that IMSA lives in. And we thought that uh, putting the displays was not sufficient for us, for IMSA students, 
that we as a community needed to know and understand um, where Leon uh, is, because without Leon, we would not all be here. Um, now with that, uh, Dr. Eric Hawker uh, has some stories to share with you. Uh, that will be followed by a couple of short videos by then your student council um, uh, president uh, will say a few words, and then Principal Dr. Hernandez. Thank you. I only met Leon a handful of times, maybe a dozen at most, yet Leon had a profound influence on my life. Particle physicists and experimental particle physicists and specifically are very privileged people. Right? The, the governments, the Department of Energy, the National Science Foundation spends hundreds of millions of dollars so that we can build wonderful accelerators wonderful detectors to investigate subatomic forces and subatomic structure. We're privileged. We understand that. Leon understood that. This is why I teach, to give back, to give others opportunities. Okay? This is one of the driving forces of Leon's life. And this example of you know, him creating the Leon Science Center, of him creating IMSA, of him teaching students. So I'm going to give you just a little example of sort of the type of person Leon was. In 1986, Leon was the director of Fermilab. Fermilab is you know, a billion dollar complex with a really powerful accelerator. At, at the time, it was the most powerful accelerator in the world. He had hundreds of physicists working for him, hundreds of support staff working for him. He was co just completing the Tevatron, right? The particle f uh, accelerator that uh, was probably at the time one of the most complicated instruments ever devised by man. And they were just finishing up completing the construction of it. And yet he took time to found IMSA. He took time to, to convince state lawmakers that, in, that Illinois needed this school. But in addition to that, <clears throat> in addition to running the lab, in addition to making the Tevatron, in addition to founding IMSA, he still made yet more time to teach high school students on Saturday mornings on Saturday morning physics, which is a program that is still continuing today. I know because I was a junior in high school and I went to Saturday morning physics and Leon Letterman taught me physics. But it doesn't stop there. Right? I went on to college, went on to grad school, and when I came back to Fermilab, to work on my PhD thesis, right? The experiment I worked on was used a detector a, called a, a, a spectrometer at the Meson East Beam Line in Fermilab. This spectrometer was designed and built by Leon, right? He designed it and built it specifically to try to find the top quark. Right? He discovered the bottom quark already. He was aiming for the top quark. He didn't discover it. It was much too high mass. But he built this thing to try to find it. Okay? And then later on, I used that same spectrometer to do my PhD research using the Tevatron, which he had also been very instrumental in bringing to Fermilab and building. Right? I'm here today because of what he did. And I am just so thankful for that. And it's one of the reasons why I think it's really important for myself, for other physicists, to, to give back, to give you opportunities to learn, to grow, to do really amazing things. <clears throat> but soon, 
you get to go out to the world. You get to go to college. You get to go to grad school to, to study, to, to advance science and math and humanities and, and advance the human condition. <laughs> but remember, when you do that, it is now your job to continue Leon's legacy of giving back of teaching others, of giving others the opportunity to do and learn amazing things about science and the world. It's why, you know, that's, that's why I teach, and I hope you do the same. Thank you. If we do what we know is right, we know what we feel is right, it's bound to happen that among our graduates there'll be numbered scientists, engineers, and those who go on to earn degrees in law and the humanities. There are likely to be those few who create new intellectual worlds, cure a human ailment, or in some other way significantly influence life on our planet. A philosophy because we don't know which of our students will do these things. Our philosophy will be to treat our charges as if each one is capable of this extraordinary achievement. Only one such product will make the effort and expense of this school for its entire duration worthwhile. As a tribute to Dr. Letterman, Student Council is asking all of you to participate in a sympathy note campaign. After the assembly, we'll be in the old calf where you can write cards expressing gratitude for IMSA's founder, which will be shared with Dr. Letterman's family. Although I never had the privilege of meeting Dr. Letterman, I'd like all of us to think about the amazing opportunities we have here because of his work the truly unique academic experience, the long-lasting friendships, and the tools that allow us to inquire and look at the world in different ways are a part of our life because of Dr. Letterman's passion for passing down math and science to the next generation, our generation. With this in mind, I highly encourage you to come to the Old Cap after the assembly and write a card to show respect for Dr. Letterman whose legacy brought us all to this wonderful place we endearingly call our home away from home. And now I'd like to invite our principal, Dr. Hernandez, to, uh, for some closing remarks. Thank you so much. So I really did have the privilege of, of meeting Leon, talking with him, and I started reminiscing with some of the alum, and as you saw, and some of you may have seen on the Facebook pages that they've been posting, Instagram, they're just putting things out about Uncle Leon as he was affectionately known around here. And everyone's sharing their own little stories about how he would just walk into a classroom or how he would just sit down in the cafeteria and said, who wants to eat with the Nobel laureate? And people would just sit down and just start talking with them. Just imagine, as Eric, uh, Dr. Hawker was talking about, well, you get to sit down and talk with a Nobel laureate about physics, about life. And that's what he did. He came to this place, and he was, for a few years, a resident here who just talked, who just walked the halls, just to inspire and he inspired every single person that came through here. He invited his quote-unquote friends, and I say quote-unquote friends, when he brings in other Nobel laureates to this place and has a conversation, these Nobel laureates would come in and just talk like, they're, like we're doing today. And these people would just talk with you, talk with the students, and interact. And no place is like this on Earth 
like IMSA. And so we do try to still bring in people, like Leon tries to bring in people, like he did. And I just want to share one quick story and then we'll close. Homecoming. How homecoming is uh, on this campus, like uh, Clash of the Halls, it's an amazing time. The pep rally, it's the pinnacle of what goes on here. And here are 600 students screaming, ranting, raving, and, and the height of it, here comes Leon Letterman walking into the gym. And he stands and he looks, and, I, and I'm standing by the corner, and he goes, Bob, what, what's going on? I'm like, it's homecoming, Leon. You know, this is what they do. And I'm like, and he's like, they should be studying, shouldn't they, Bob? And I'm like, <laughs> Leon, this is how they blow off steam. So he goes, can I say a word? Can I, can I go out and just say something to him? And I'm like, okay, you know, so I, uh, Kim McLaren uh, was the activities director at the time and in charge of homecoming, and I went up to Kim and I said, Kim, Leon wants to say something. Okay, uh, you know, if Leon wants to say something to the students, so he walks out, dead silence. Dead silence during homecoming pep rally. I just want you all to know how proud I am that you're still students and you're still kids. You're still going to change the world, but you're still kids. And I thank you. And the place went nuts. The place went crazy because here is this amazing man who changes the world, knows that you, each individual student, can change the world, just like he was talking about in that film. You can, and that's what he brings to us. Leon's hope, Leon's desire was for you, each one of you students, and each one of the faculty who comes here, each one of the staff members who comes here to make that difference. So I love the challenge that Dr. Torres gave us. I love the challenge that Dr. Hawker gave us. I love the challenge that Vinay gave us. You will make a difference. Keep Leon's legacy alive. Change the world one step at a time. Thank you for honoring this wonderful man. Have a great day and a great weekend. Thank you so much.